Hey everybody, this is Jen from Garden Jen's Journey. Today I'm going to be taking you along with me and showing you my seed stash. I'm going to show you what kind of seeds I have in my collection, how I organize them. That way when it's time to plant, I have an easy way to grab them and go and get planting. So come along with me and I'm going to show you what that seed stash looks like. Okay. So this is what my seed stash looks like. Um, I have totes that everything is in, and they're in bags that are in bags, and I'll show you as we go through them. But um, I have two totes of veggies, uh, seeds. I got um, some flowers and a tote of herbs. I actually need to upgrade that tote to this size tote because I have a lot of herbs now. But I'm gonna go ahead and show you uh, what is inside. Okay, so this is the flower tote. This is where all my flower seeds are that I use for my garden. So, as you can see, I have quite a few in here. I have these seed packets here. Um, if you saw my previous video, you saw I had these seeds that I just got. I have not yet sorted them, um, so today's a good day to do that. <coughs> all right. Okay, so I have all these sorts of baggies. Uh, we live um, in a climate that, uh, or in a zone that kind of has high humidity at times, and so I have to take extra precaution to make sure that my seeds stay dry. So what I do is I put them in, uh, these are just jewelry and craft bags, and uh, I find if I fold them in half, they fit in uh, this is the two by three inch uh, size craft bag, um, and it works really well. And then I take these and I put them in, this is a basically a quart size, um, a resealable baggie, and it keeps all my varieties together. Um, so I have coxcomb here in my bachelor's button that I have um, in here. So um, I have, um, can't even pronounce this. I want to say sloppy gloss, but and this is a new addition this year that I have. And then I have some verbena. I got a lot of zinnias this year. I'm going to be doing a cut flower bed. So I have a lot of zinnias I'm going to be using. Snapdragons. I love these guys. And before, I was just using the tall deluxe variety. And I've been saving seeds for years. So I have a lot of my own seeds I've been saving. But this year, I'm actually adding some more colors to the bed. So we're going to take our Orange Wonder and we're going to put it in here with the rest of them. So yeah, Snapdragons, uh, Petunias, let's see, Irises. Um, these are brand new to me this year. So we're going to be planting some uh, more Irises. Um, Hollyhocks, those are new this year. Um, we're going to be adding those in. Straw Flowers. Let's see what else we got. My Slosias and Coxcombs, and they're it's in the same family, but Slosia is more like the Indian paintbrush, and then the Coxcomb, of course, is the uh, more uh, looks like the rooster's comb. So that's how it's got its name. So I'm gonna put that one in there. All right, the hibiscus, and I have Roselle. Roselle is actually uh, in the hibiscus family. This is what is used um, in lots of different herbal teas and things. Um, the hibiscus flowers that are used are actually from the roselle uh, plant. So I could put that with my hibiscus, but since it's an edible herb, I might put it by itself in my herb box. So there's that. Some black-eyed Susans. Rose of Sharon. Let's see what else. More black-eyed Susans. Some candy tufts, alyssum, let's see, wildflower mix. I have a bunch of these. I have this, and then I have this box here. It's wildflower mix. Let's see what else. Uh, some poppies, and then um, they're really pretty. That's a uh, real pretty salmon poppy. I haven't been able to get these guys to grow, so um, you can see this is getting old. But anyways, got those in there and some flocks. That's a really pretty plant. And let's see what else. 
some columbine. I used to have some columbine, but it looks like it's all gone now. And then I have lots and lots of marigold seeds. So that's my flower seeds that I have. And I know I have, there's Canterbury Bells. There's a specific one I'm looking for, but I'm not seeing it. Um, but I have the Bachelor's Boy this year. Um, I've been growing the blue one. I grew that one last year. And then I ordered, this is Black Boy. And then M.I. Gardner had a pink and another color. I can't remember. A pink, a white, and something else. Um, but I'm going to be adding those as well. So that's cool. And then the Butterfly Pea. Um, that's a dual purpose. It's a flower that you can use to dye drinks, uh, dye uh, food, uh, and all sorts of stuff. So I got that as well. So that's going to go in here. And eventually I'll get them their own little baggie, but not for now. So that is the flower collection. This is my herb collection. And it's ever expanding as I can. Some things I cannot grow in my zone 5B just because we have too short of a growing season or if it's a perennial um, it won't overwinter here. It'll die off in our winters. So um, I grow as much as I can but some things I just cannot get to grow here. Uh, this is a pink hyssop. It's really really pretty. It's actually more of a flower than an herb but um, it's really really pretty. But let's see, I have all sorts of stuff in here. <clears throat> Oops, let's turn it around this way. Like I said, I gotta get a bigger tote because this is stuffed. So, I have caraway and goji berries, um, echinacea, safflower. Um, let's see where that other one go. So I'll take our safflower and we'll put it in here. And then I have lemongrass. Love, love, love with lemongrass. Oh yes, the bachelor buttons. That's where I have them because they're actually edible. The tansy. And I've saved my own seeds, so I have lots of seeds from the tansy. The wonderful mustard. Bee balm. Stevia. Stevia is very difficult to grow. Uh, you can get... Uh, the generation rate, or a uh, germination rate, sorry, is about 1 in 10. So, um, very hard to grow stevia, but every year I try anyway. Fenugreek, nestritums, or nestertiums, however you want to pronounce them. I got a couple different varieties this year. I used to grow just the jewel mix, but um, with M.I. Gardner coming out with uh, lots of different flowers in their collection, I went ahead and got some different colors this year. Uh, I have borage and savory chrysanthemum if you did not know it it's actually an herb it's an edible flower so it's considered an herb uh, chicory and this is the kind that's uh, like the wildflowers you see uh, uh, mostly in around ditches and some uh, prairies and stuff like that this is not the uh, endive with the large bulb this is just the the wildflower type version and then we got plantain. Um, I grew some plantain. Um, tried to grow some that were in a bed because uh, plantain grows wild here. But we have lots of little feet that uh, trample over it. So I wanted to try to see if I can grow some in a garden bed so it was a little bit cleaner to harvest. Uh, some more calendula, chamomile. Let's see what else. Marshmallow. I love marshmallow. It's a very good uh, medicinal herb. And then we got some fennel. This is the hyssop. That's the herb. It's a very beautiful blue hyssop. Mugwort. That's a very good herb, but not if you're a lady who is pregnant or wanting to be pregnant. Don't touch that plant. And then thyme, which I just got some new thyme in, so we got to put that in there. <clears throat> Marjoram. And I have a whole bunch of different mint seeds. I'm going to be growing some uh, new mint this year. I don't remember what it is in here, but there's a there's a new mint that I have, cilantro. So I'm going to give you a tip about cilantro once I find the other part. Okay, cilantro, when it goes to seed or bolts, becomes coriander. 
the coriander is the seeds from the cilantro plant. So these two plants are actually the same plant. It's just this is the leaves, that's the seeds. So um, this specific variety, the Indian coriander, is a fast bolting a cilantro plant so you actually get the seeds where this one's a slow bolt so you can harvest the leaves but those two are are the identical same plant <clears throat> all right lavender you can never have enough lavender i think that one can be a tricky plant to grow as well but last year um it did really really well so i was excited got a lot of lavender then we have oregano Parsley, dill, you can never have enough dill, especially if you want the swallowtail um, caterpillars to be in your garden for the swallowtail butterfly, you have to have dill. <clears throat> Rosemary, this one's like the lavender, it can be very difficult to germinate, um, but it's a wonderful herb. Then sage and tarragon. I have a little packet of tarragon I got from the seed swap. This is a new addition this year. This is indigo. I got this from Pine Tree Garden Seeds. Um, I do most of my seed purchases from Baker Creek and um, MI Gardener, but sometimes what I need I, I can't find there. So Pine Tree uh, is another good place to find some wonderful seeds. Um, you have to look. At, at the description though because not everything that they sell is organic or heirlooms and that's specifically what I grow is heirlooms but anyway <clears throat> pine tree is another good place to find seeds so that is what is in my herb collection so now I'll take you to the gigantic veggie collection okay and I do have basil in my herb collection but I just couldn't find it um, I have a lot of packages in that container so this is tote number one for my um, veggies and I have all sorts of stuff in here so um, I have my greens which are my kales, um, my um, swiss chard, collards those are on here um, I have corn lots and lots of different corns um, I grow dry corn I don't grow sweet corn um, just for various personal reasons but I have lots of different corn um, I did harvest some of my own corn. This is Atomic Orange from a couple of years ago. Um, I got the original seed from Baker Creek. Um, so it's really, really cool. Love the stuff. And of course, my brand new addition is the Painted Mountain that we're going to use this year. And then I have my Cabbage Family. And the new addition to that this year is going to be the Chinese broccoli. That's going to go in here. So cabbages and broccoli are all in the same family. So that's going to be awesome. And then this is my cucumbers. I have regular cucumbers and then the um, Mexican gherkin or the cucamelon. I put that in here as well. So those are all my cucumbers. My watermelons. I have onion seeds. I don't use onion sets, I use onion seeds um, and just grow them myself. Have good luck with that. Lots of different carrots, radish, peas. Um, I, the peas that I have found that I really like are the blue shelling peas from MI Gardener. Wonderful peas. I think the ones um, by Baker Creek, the King Tut um, purple pea is um, kind of a similar variety to this one. But anyways, that's the pea that I really like. It's a blue shelling pea for, for me personally. Um, then I have some greens. Um, I have all different sorts of stuff in here. I have flax seed, um, chia seed. Um, let's see what else. Flax seeds, chia seeds, um, buckwheat, which I have. A new addition to that this year is the Road Re uh, Rosella Red. That's going to be really pretty. So grains are used as a cover crop. So, and then a whole bunch of sunflowers. You can see uh, this is a very full container of sunflowers. And I got a new addition to that one this year. Yeah, that one is really really pretty. And 
and then different varieties of peanuts. So that's everything that's in this tote. Now we're going to go on to our last tote. Okay, so this is our last veggie tote of seeds. And I have some stuff that hasn't got put away yet. Um, so, yeah. so I got some lettuces and uh, spinach. So I planted those in the greenhouse, seeing if I could grow anything over the winter in our greenhouse. I'm not going to be exactly, uh, uh, I can't think of the word. I'm not going to expect much of anything. Our greenhouse doesn't hold heat, but I thought, hey, let's give it a shot. Um, but I got um, some bush beans, and for my beans, I had to really separate them because um, I grow lots of different types of beans. I have bush beans, oops, sorry bush beans that I grow, I grow pole beans, I grow green beans, and I grow dry beans. So I, you know, all sorts of different varieties of beans. So I had to make sure that I had them separated. Um, melons, um, I grow melons for the farmer's market. The only uh, melons that we really eat around here are watermelons and sometimes um, the honeydew. But um, otherwise I grow them for the farmer's market. Oh, these are the lettuces that I have, which I have two. And let's see, the new lettuce I got this year was a red romaine type, so that's going to be really cool. All right, so these are my green pole beans, um, or my green beans, pole beans. Um, and this is basically beans that uh, you harvest and eat when they are uh, fresh. And so um, I got a couple different varieties here. The Trifano Violetto. It's not green by any means. It's actually purple. Beautiful, beautiful purple bean. Um, but you eat it as a green type snapping bean. Really wonderful. Um, the Kentucky Wonder is a staple of mine. Um, so I have that. Um, let's see. That's basically what's in here. Um, Yes, the, those two beans are the main staples for my green bean pole bean selection. And then these are my dried beans. And most of the beans I grow are pole bean varieties, but uh, I grow a lot of dry beans. And the succotash for, uh, bean is one of my new selections this year. But um, I have all sorts of stuff from cow peas to pinto beans, um, some canelli beans. Um, this one is called the Painted Pony. It's a really pretty bean. Um, so all sorts of different beans um, that I grow. But you can tell how many different varieties of beans I have. Let's see. These are different types of peppers. And I grow mostly sweet peppers, but I do occasionally grow a cayenne pepper um, for the herbal benefit, as well as sometimes a jalapeno uh, to make salsa. And the pepper I'm adding this year is the paprika pepper. This is from M.I. Gardner, and it's actually the pepper that's used to make the spice paprika. Um, Celery is an interesting uh, plant to try to grow in this area. Um, I usually grow Utah tall celery. That's a tongue twister. This year I am trying the pink plume or pink celery, depending on where you get it from. I heard it's supposed to be very good. Uh, grows a lot better than the Utah tall sometimes. And uh, it's really nice color. So I figured I'd give this one a go this year. So this is my new addition for celery. And I uh, have lots of different beets. My husband is a beet fanatic, so I made sure that I have lots of different varieties for him to try. Same with radishes. I have lots of different radishes because he loves radishes. Then we have our tomato seeds. And I got rid of quite a few tomato seeds. This thing used to be bursting at the seams like my beans. But I got rid of quite a few because um, I actually have an intolerance to tomatoes now. And my family doesn't really care for them. So um, I got rid of quite a few. But I kept some because uh, we do use still a lot of uh, tomato sauce, uh, spaghetti sauce, pizza sauce, 
I do make some salsa. So I kept the tomatoes around. They do serve a purpose. And this year, one of the new additions, and there's more, but one of the new additions is the pink bumblebee. I also got the blueberry cherry tomato. I think I got that one from M.I. Gardener to try. So we'll see how that one goes. And let's see what else do I got. I have asparagus seeds still. Um, it's been very difficult to get asparagus to grow in my area. Um, I think it's my yard. <laughs> Um, I, I get the, the plants grow, I get the nice fronds, but so I still, so far, um, some of my plants are in the third year, and I still only get fronds. I really don't get a nice stock from these guys yet. Alright, and then squash. These are all the different squashes, whether it's pumpkin, um, blue hubbard, um, zucchini, uh, all my squashes are in here got quite a selection. I downsized my squash too. Uh, last year almost all my squash was devastated by the squash bug. So I was really narrowing down what kind of squash I was going to grow um, because I was tired of, of the squash bugs uh, winning the war so to speak. So I was looking for more pest resistance and then um, only growing squash that's going to give me a large output for minimal plants like the blue hubbard that thing is a huge squash um, per fruit so really don't need a lot of those to feed our family over the winter so um, yeah that's my squash eggplant um, it's a really neat little plant um, my family doesn't really care for eggplant but I grow this kind of for the uh, farmers market and then my gourds um, I tried growing loofah last year um, I actually got a loofah to grow but because of our uh, growing season being so chaotic uh, it never really got to fully mature to be the uh, loofah that you can use to scrub so I have a loofah I actually have some birdhouse gourd seeds in here um, and some other things so that's what I got going on in there um, so those are the types of, of seeds I have in my collection. I mean, I could go through each bag and show you every individual one, but that video would probably take an hour or so, and I don't think you want to watch me go through every single bag for an hour. Um, but anyways, kind of give you an idea of what I grow here in my garden in Zone 5B. And maybe give you some ideas and inspiration on maybe different types of uh plants to grow in your garden so again the gardening people I generally use is MI Gardener and Baker Creek seeds uh, sometimes pine tree seeds and depending on um, the seed variety like the Trifano Violetto um, that seed got lost last year because of the frost I lost all my seeds so I had to really look on the internet and find where I could get these seeds again um, because I had gotten a few seeds through a seed swap, and so I had no idea where to get them. Um, but this is Prairie Road Organic Seed, so a very reputable seed company. But that's generally where I get most of my seeds, and then um, when I do seed swaps, um, I can get some interesting seeds as well. So, again, I hope that gives you an idea, and uh, if this has been inspiring to you or helped you in any way, Make sure you give uh, the video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And I just thank you so much for following me on my journey. And I hope wherever you are that you are richly blessed. Bye-bye.